Today we're going to go through the process of refinishing a rifle. Before me you'll find this uh, Winchester Model 190. It's a 22 semi-automatic rifle which features a steel barrel, wood stock, wood forein, and uh, an aluminum receiver. So this is going to go through the process of refinishing the wood, the steel. We're going to re-blue it with the classic black oxide hot salts bluing and then the receiver, which is made of aluminum, will have to be Cerakoted. So we're going to touch on a lot of aspects of refinishing this firearm. To do that, first we're going to go through and assess all the parts. Sometimes with a gun in this condition, you'll find that some of the parts are damaged or worn. So we're just going to take the thing apart, disassemble it completely, uh, assess everything, and go from there. After that, we're going to go through the process of refinishing all the individual parts and getting this firearm back to uh, good working condition. The customer wasn't really looking for a restoration per se, so he just wants this back into a functional firearm that he can use around the, around the ranch. So stick with me and we'll go through that process. All right, so here we've got the Winchester Model 190-22. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the disassembly process on this, uh, give it a good evaluation and a assessment on the parts. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my gloves on, avoid getting all that nasty stuff on me. All right, so we'll start with the butt pad and the butt stock. You got your typical Phillips head screws on the on the plate. Uh, on the plate, it's original, so that's good. It is made out of plastic. It's not cracked. <clears throat> and before I took it off, it actually looks like it's oversized on the, on the butt stock, so that's actually good. What we can do with that <clears throat> is once we got the stock all sanded down, I'll uh, actually install this onto the back of it and sand this in place. That way it'll be more of a one-to-one -one fit. It'll actually look real nice um, instead of having that overlap and that step in there. So that's kind of fortuitous. Um, nice surprise there. Plus it'll clean up all the little schmutz on the outside, the scratches and the, the dings from the years and years of use. All right, so I'm going to peer down here, see what I got to work with on the buttstock removal. It's actually a hex head nut, um, so I'm going to have to grab some tools to get that off, but uh, do that a little later. Do a quick little function t function check on this. This one doesn't actually feel too bad. I think the majority of the rust is up here. I don't know if this one was stored upside down in the safe. It may have been like that. Hard to say, but, um, and again, this is probably aluminum, looking at it, so there's not going to be any rust on that. It probably is on the inside, but that's okay. We'll deal with that later. Um, I'll pull the inner magazine tube out, which actually comes out nice and freely. It's fairly rust-free, except for the exposed parts there, so that's just a little surface rust, and a little bit of rust on the knurled knob there. So since I've got that out, we can punch out the retaining pin and just kind of get the spring out and get the, get the guts out of this one. Just to get a head start on that. Let's see, that'll bear with me a second. There we go. Okay, so there's the pin, and that should come loose, revealing the spring. Spring's in really good shape. Not a bit of rust on that. And then our follower. Typically these are painted orange from the factory. There's a little bit of original paint left on that. But that's okay, we do Cerakote here, so we can make sure that's original again. The original paint and color. And then the uh, actual inner tube, 
That'll just need to be spun in the lathe and polished back up. That'll be real easy to get cleaned up. And as you can see, it's not blued. Uh, typically on the inside, they're not going to be blued. Uh, it gives a nice little transition when you're peering through the, the opening here in the actual outer magazine tube. So with those pieces off, for now, if we can go ahead and get the sights off, so I'll just, they're <clears throat> dovetailed sights. So they're just gonna be installed in, in either direction here. A little croil to loosen the rust a bit. And a brass punch. There goes that. There's the front sight. It doesn't appear to have any bronze or brass pieces in it, so that's good. So that can be cleaned up and re -blued. Uh We've got a rear sight here and a reposition. And it'd probably be best to take the forehand off first for that. And then we've got a cross pin here for our trigger group. So I can believe I can get that out now. Set that there. And a little elevation to allow the pin to come out. So there's the pin. That should allow the entire plate to come out. So we'll get into that. And then actually, fortuitously, there's very little rust in that too. Uh, well, well, we will be seracoding the uh, actual bottom on that, so all those guts will have to come out. And that reveals the internals of the receiver, which real quick, I can just pop out the bolt, and then we can get a little bit more in detail on the, the trigger guard and things like that. Um, but the bolt, Fairly easy to remove this. You just kind of back up on the on the spring a little bit, and then you pull this charging handle out. So with that free, I should be able to pivot this up and out of the receiver fairly easily. There's your breech bolt, and then your recoil spring and guide rod. And just go ahead and pull that out if possible. been a while since I've done one of these 190s. They are actually pretty popular around here. Okay, there's the recoil spring and guide rod. So that's basically field stripped. Um, as I mentioned, I'm gonna have to get, go grab a socket, a long socket to get in there to get that out. Um, and then we'll proceed to take the rest of this apart. All right, I've managed to dig out my deep socket driver. And looks like we're just long enough. Okay, that's coming loose. Just took a couple more turns and it should be out. All right. All right, quick little look over on this. Uh, just some water damage that I can see. Uh, there's a couple chips. Where were they? Oh, here on the grip cap area. Um, other than that, this should this should actually sand pretty quickly. So save us some time on this one. Okay, and then should be able to push out the pin for the outer magazine tube. Get that tube out, and then that should release the forearm. Let's see how this goes. Get that hammer. All right. That pin was extremely loose. And like I said, I should be able to just slide this forward now. Yep. So there's your outer magazine tube. And that should free up our forend, hopefully. There it goes. I forgot about this.
plastic little spacer in there for the magazine tube. And looking at the fore end, uh, same deal. There's a few minor dings and dents in there. Uh, mainly it's just, just drab and dull from being soaked in water for a while. That should clean up pretty nicely too. Okay, so that's out. Uh, at the, since I have this in the vise, we're gonna go ahead and knock out. This should just knock out as well. <laughs> or not. A little bit frozen with rust. <clears throat> May have to let the croil do its magic on that for a minute. But I'll give it one more shot. Yeah, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute, but that should come out. Just dovetailed in, so anyway. There's the rear sight. One, one last thing real quick to get out. Let's get this. So I can get access to it. That's not held in very tightly. So we've got our rear sight, elevation, step, and then there's this kind of steel winged cover. Um, not sure what they were thinking with that. Kind of, kind of gaudy looking, but hey, it, it's the original part for the original gun, so we'll keep it on there. Um, then the barrel's held on by a castle nut. Uh, typically, I'd just leave the barrel on for this, although this one actually feels loose. So heck, while we're at it, let's see if we can just get that off. A lot of 22 barrels are pressed in. Uh, but this one's held in by a castle nut. <clears throat> so yeah, look at that. That's no good. So <laughs> good thing I noticed that. Don't even need a wrench or a punch for this guy. That should just slide right out. It's like a bit of rust in there as well. Let's see if I can just knock it off. And one thing you want to be careful with this. Um, these Winchester 190s, this is an aluminum receiver. So if you start whacking on this real hard, you'll, you'll ding up the aluminum real bad. Uh, I got a plastic hammer, and I'm not gonna hit it extremely hard. I'm just gonna see if a little tap in action will persuade it off. It's moving, there it goes. So yeah, luckily that came out. Uh, the other benefit of this is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is aluminum. So this will have to be Cerakoted, and this will be blued. So uh, you can't put aluminum in bluing tanks. So that had to come off anyway. And our barrel looks fine, uh, with the exception of our magazine tube uh, retaining device there that needs to come off. Um, probably do that off camera. Same concept, you just drift it off. Um, now with that off, there's one last thing. If we can get this screw out, <clears throat> might as well. And, and yep, that's unscrewing very easily, so just go ahead and do that. And a little part just uh, fell out. This goes behind the breech bolt and is held in by the, um, the recoil spring and guide rod. So, a couple more turns and we'll be completely stripped there. A couple more turns and we'll be <laughs> completely stripped there. Okay. And these last few turns don't want to don't want to actually cooperate with me here.
There we go. Okay, receiver is completely stripped down and ready for refinishing. Set that aside. We'll regroup uh, and go ahead and disassemble the breech bolt and the trigger mechanism assembly.